Hey mamas, breastfeeding has such amazing long-term health benefits for babies and mommies and is such a wonderful bonding experience. But things like mastitis and clogged milk ducts can turn an experience that's supposed to be wonderful into one that's painful. In today's video, I'm going to give you the tools to prevent and clear clogged ducts and avoid mastitis. <music> Hey, it's Morgan. Welcome to the Passable Parent Channel. I've been a pediatric nurse for the past 10 years specializing in early childhood development, and I'm also a mom. Before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn notifications on so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support. While over 80% of moms start off breastfeeding their babies, less than half are exclusively breastfeeding them at three months. And a big reason for that is the problems mamas face with clogged ducts, mastitis, and very little support. Clogged ducts are experienced by many mamas, especially in the first year of breastfeeding, and can turn into an infection called mastitis, which can result in hospitalization in some cases and completely derail you from your breastfeeding journey. Clogged milk ducts or blocked milk ducts are hard, tender lumps that form in the narrow milk ducts of the breast. They prevent the flow of breast milk. Clogged milk ducts are a common breastfeeding problem and they can cause swelling, redness, and pain in the area of the breast where they develop. Later in this video, I'm going to teach you different tips that will help you prevent these challenges or treat them if they do come up quickly so that you can return to breastfeeding your baby. But first, in order to prevent clogged ducts, it's really important to understand the different causes. The first is an incorrect breastfeeding latch. If your baby is not latching onto your breast well, they may not be able to draw out that much milk from your breast. When breast milk is left behind, it can block the ducts. Make sure to check out my video on how to get a good deep latch if you are struggling with this problem. Another reason is breast engorgement. Breast milk can build up in your breasts and clog your milk ducts if you don't breastfeed often enough, miss feedings, or wait too long between feedings. Or sometimes even if you're supplementing with formula, your baby should be nursing about every two to three hours at the breast, especially as a newborn. Breast engorgement can also develop when your baby begins sleeping through the night. Another cause is a bleb or a milk blister. A nipple bleb or blister is a tiny white or yellow spot that forms on the nipple at the end of a milk duct or nipple pour. If you have a milk bleb or blister, it might look like a smooth, shiny, singular white dot similar to a whitehead pimple. Milk blisters are often associated with a clogged milk duct, but they also can actually cause clogged ducts. These small milk-filled cysts or blockages are thought to be created by breast milk that has become thick and hard. Blebs or blisters can plug up the openings of your milk ducts and cause your breast milk to back up and get stuck in the narrow passageways that allow the milk to flow from where it's made in your breast out to your nipple. Another cause is an overabundant milk supply. If your body produces a lot of breast milk, it can lead to breast engorgement and plugged milk ducts, which is why it's important to be making sure to empty your breasts when they start to become engorged. You can tell if they're starting to become engorged because you may get that over full feeling. They might become more sore or sensitive. You'll even notice that they look larger. Another cause is excessive pressure on your breasts. A bra that has an underwire or one that is too tight can actually put pressure on the breast tissue and lead to clogged milk ducts. The straps of an infant carrier or a heavy diaper bag can also cause pressure on your breasts. I always recommend trying to find wireless and comfortable bras, especially in the beginning of your breastfeeding journey when your milk is still regulating. I'll make sure to link some of my favorite bras and any other products I discuss in the description box below for you. And I also recommend, if you can, to try sleeping without a bra and going braless when you can. Dehydration and fatigue can also cause clogged ducts. Lack of rest and not drinking enough fluids can actually put you at a greater risk of developing a clogged milk duct. Sometimes exercise can cause clogged ducts. Exercise is a great thing to be doing once it's safe and approved by your doctor postpartum, but clogged ducts can result from vigorous or strenuous exercise, especially of the upper body. So make sure to check in with your doctor what exercises are safe to start doing. Weaning can be another cause of clogged ducts. If you wean your baby too quickly, it can lead to that breast engorgement, plugged milk ducts, and mastitis. So it's really important to wean your baby gradually over time. The first and most important thing you can do for the prevention of clogged ducts 
is to nurse frequently. And if you have to miss a session, try to pump in its place. The frequent removing and emptying of the breast milk from the breasts will actually help prevent clogged ducts. Nurse or pump every two to three hours or on demand from your baby. If you are pumping, make sure your flange is sized right for you. Your nipple should not be rubbing against the sides of the tunnel and your areola should not be pulled into the pump. Or if you see your nipples turn a whitish color after you remove them from the pump, like the blood is drained from them, this is also not something you wanna see. If you see any of these things happening to your breast, your breast flange may be the incorrect size. And again, the breast flange is the part of the breast pump that actually goes around your nipple. If you aren't sure if your breast flange is sized appropriately or properly for you, make sure to check with your doctor. They can refer you to a certified lactation consultant that actually can help with this and make sure that you're wearing the properly fitting flange. Another tip I have for you is to actually hand express milk when your breasts feel too full and make sure to listen to your body. You can just gently squeeze the breasts to express some of that breast milk out if your breasts are starting to feel too full or uncomfortable. You don't even need to get the pump sometimes. Sometimes just doing a little bit of hand expression into the sink or into the shower can actually help relieve some of that pressure. You can try changing breastfeeding positions with each feeding to allow your baby to drain different areas of your breasts. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out my video on different breastfeeding positions and how to get that great latch. Avoid restrictive clothing whenever you can and nursing bras that are too tight or have an underwire. And do not sleep on your stomach. All of these can put pressure on your breasts. And if you can, sleep braless. It's also really important to stay hydrated since dehydration actually puts you at an increased risk of clogged ducts. I always recommend to carry around a large reusable water bottle to just remind yourself to stay hydrated and keep drinking those fluids throughout the day. When it is time to wean your baby, try to do so gradually. You may need to express small amounts of milk in between feedings to relieve that engorgement but don't express too much or you'll signal your body that it should be continuing to make more breast milk. You have to remember it's all about that supply and demand. The more you express or pump or nurse or your body will believe that it needs to keep making milk during those times. It's also really important to treat clogged milk ducts as soon as you feel them developing to avoid that mastitis. Mastitis again is the inflammation of the breast caused by an obstruction of milk, an infection, or an allergy, and most commonly actually happens in the first weeks of breastfeeding, and it usually only affects one breast. If you have done all of these things and you still end up with a clogged duct, I'm so sorry you are dealing with this pain, but you are not alone. It happens, mama. The good news is that there are things you can do at home to help treat it. First is breastfeeding often every one to three hours or on demand to help keep your breast milk flowing through the ducts. If it's not too painful, start feeding your baby on the side with that clogged milk duct first. Your baby's suck will be stronger at the beginning of a nursing session, which may help to actually remove the clogged duct. If that breast is too tender and it's just too painful, begin the feeding on the opposite breast and wait until after that letdown reflex is stimulated. Then switch to the breast that has the clog. When you're latching your child onto your breast, try to position them so that their nose or chin is toward the clogged duct. They may be able to better dislodge the blockage in these positions. You also wanna be applying heat if you have a clog. Apply heat to that clogged area before each feeding to help with your letdown reflux and the flow of your breast milk through your ducts. They now sell products that you can use and attach to the area around your nipple to apply heat and stimulate milk flow. I'll make sure to link them down below and all the other helpful products I talk about in this video. Even taking a warm shower and letting the warm water run over your breast can actually help before nursing or pumping. Gently massage the affected area when applying the heat and while you're breastfeeding your baby or pumping. This can help get that clog out. Again, massage those breasts while you're nursing your baby. Always massage in the direction of the nipple because this is the way we want the clog to break up and the milk to flow out of your nipple. One of my favorite tricks is using an electric toothbrush. So you can even use an electric toothbrush on the area that you feel the clogged duct while you're nursing your baby or pumping. The vibration can actually help to clear up a clogged duct. As you can see, I just have a basic electric toothbrush. This one is oral B, And for demonstration purposes, we'll say the clog is right here on the breast. This is my little breast model. So we'll say the clog is right here. 
and you can actually just turn on the electric toothbrush and the vibration will actually clear that clog duct. So you just put the toothbrush right where you feel that clog and just massage it in to the breast. You can even do this while your baby is latched to help break up that clog even faster. They also sell different breast massagers now to help with clog ducts, and I'll make sure to link those down below as well. Another way to break up those clogs is to hand express. Using hand expression or a breast pump after you breastfeed your baby to remove more breast milk helps to try and free up that blockage. It's important to empty the breast of breast milk as completely as you can to help break up that clog. There's also some supplements that you can try that many mamas swear by. Of course, please ask your doctor if certain supplements are right for you because again, every woman is different, every mom is different, and we wanna make sure that whatever you're taking is safe and right for you. Many mamas swear by taking a supplement called sunflower lecithin. Lecithin is a nutritional supplement that is safe to take while you're breastfeeding and is believed to help resolve and prevent plugged milk ducts by actually thinning the breast milk to help it flow better. Now, keep in mind, it does not increase the production of breast milk, it thins the breast milk. But again, make sure to check with your doctor that this is a safe supplement for you to be trying. Another great tip that I have for you that many mamas swear by is actually using the Haka silicone breast pump to break up those clogs. I'm gonna first remove the lid, then you're gonna wanna fill the pump with warm water and some Epsom salt, but make sure not to fill it too much so that it can still suction onto the breast and doesn't come up out of the actual pump. And you can just leave this on while the water is still warm and just let your breast soak in it. This trick has been very effective for mamas and if it doesn't clear the clog the first time, you can do it up to four times a day to help break up that clog. I wanna go over with you when you should be calling the doctor. Treated right away, a clogged milk duct usually begins to get smaller or go away within a few days. But if it's left untreated, it can get worse and lead to more serious complications, such as that mastitis we talked about or even a breast abscess. Make sure to call your doctor if the lump does not go away within three days. If the lump grows, if the area is red, you start to see red streaking on your breasts or the lump increases in size. Call your doctor if you develop a fever or if you develop flu-like symptoms. I hope this video was helpful and gives you the tools to prevent and treat clogged ducts so you feel more confident and able to continue your breastfeeding journey. Please like, subscribe, and turn notifications on so you don't miss out on any future videos. And feel free to comment down below if you have any questions for me or topics you'd like to see me cover in future videos. Thank you so much for your time today and for your support. I hope to see you in the next video.